very carefully there are three reasons that cause or three factors that are responsible for these seasons of frustration hardship challenges i want you to listen very carefully every one of us seated under the sound of my voice would have gone through or will go through one or more of these seasons are you ready the first reason why people become weak why people become fatigued spiritually and otherwise why people become discouraged the very first reason listen carefully is what i i term the deference of hope or hope deferred write it down please disappointed expectations can dampen people's spiritual lives disappointed expectations can dampen people's finances you put your money in the business or an investment and it crashes and you're in trouble you try to buy a land eventually you find out there's a court case around that land and they tell you they will get back to you or you submit your cv and for a long time two three years you know sometimes i wonder when people share testimonies here and then they say after i did this and that or maybe when the word came a job i applied for for three four years now called me can you imagine how long that the, the issue is not the miracle the issue is the endurance to have waited three four years are we together the difference of hope the bible says in proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12 write it down please proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12 it says hope deferred makes the heart sick and when the desire cometh the bible says it is a tree of life please look at me do you know why many young people in this country are already beginning to face medical conditions that you would think only people in their late 50s and 60s right now you can see a young boy in his early 20s having the same symptom with someone who is probably 65 seven years because of hope deferred haven't spent five six seven ten years multiple programs in school most of them live with joy in their heart expecting to get a job immediately and from that time 10 years 15 years 20 years no job no nothing financial issues marital issues fertility issues i think one of the most depressing of all issues in my opinion as i have seen is the issue of fruitfulness where people will dance and celebrate everybody will celebrate with them speak prophetic words and 10 15 years later the couple are still waiting especially you see let me tell you this especially if you are in a position where you also have to minister to others i've had the privilege to cry and pray with many preachers and sometimes when you see them cry their heart over these issues it can be hope deferred can be frustrating you will need the grace and the strength of god if god is speaking to you say amen. amen number two very quickly what is the second reason now pay attention why people's faith is dampened why their zest and their zeal goes down the second is attacks and persecution write it down please the second reason why believers become discouraged why they do not have the strength to continue is attacks and persecution now listen very carefully attacks and persecution very very serious james chapter 1 please from verse 1 to 4 i pray someone is learning tonight james 4 from verse 1 to 4 james 1 i meant to say forgive me james 1 from verse 1 to 4 james 1 it says james a servant of god and of our lord jesus christ to the 12 stripes which are scattered abroad greetings uh-huh it says my brethren so he's speaking to believers look up please count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations knowing this 
there is an information that you have to know that the trying of your faith listen carefully walketh patience verse 4 it says but let patience have her perfect walk that ye may be perfect the word perfect there is mature and entire wanting nothing count it all joy listen to me many of you here have tasted greatness at different levels in politics in government in family life in spirituality ministry whatever it is and i can tell you there is a cross there is a burden of greatness that most people do not know if most people understand the burden that is associated with greatness you will not hurry into greatness you will rather pray for strength and stamina are we together now it is easy to be carried away by the glamour and the prestige that is around the great and not know that every great man is also carrying a cross ask those in business ask those in politics you know many times we complain that politicians are corrupt people and all of that but you imagine someone who gets a position and there are over 130 people connected both extended and nuclear family hoping to eat from that position and everybody is calling and saying my uncle you are a wicked man you are a devil you can help me what is this and now this man has this to deal the temptation to already go there and begin to touch resources is already there because of that reality let me tell you this greatness needs a skill for you to remain there in fact the easiest part of the equation of greatness is becoming it remaining great is harder than becoming great we all aspire to rise to different levels of greatness in the kingdom whether in ministry there are people every time i pray for people ministers apostle i want to be like you apostle i want to do this and sometimes i i feel guilty trying to lay hands on those people because i'm asking i hope i'm not destroying this destiny by exposing you to an anointing whose battle you know nothing about every mantle has the battle that confronts it you want to be ceo in africa are you ready to stand the attacks and the charms and the wizardry and the witchcraft that follows greatness i want to go into oil and gas congratulations are you ready for the biases that go through that sector i want to be a politician do you know what it means to live every day with threats for the rest of your political career someone is eyeing you and vowing if you are alive by next week and yet you have to smile through the storms can i tell you the great deserve your applause most people have no idea that greatness is a burden many times when god does not bring it to a life of an individual it is not him it is not wickedness it is his mercy looking at you and say let me not wreck this fragile destiny that is not yet fortified with knowledge and so he withholds certain things to let you grow hallelujah i remember many years as a man of god many years ago um i i i really had problems I, you know I'm, I'm one person who doesn't like trouble at all i want to make sure i call everybody respond to everybody do everything to everybody and it was wearing me out i didn't have time for myself people would call me 12 1 a.m and you know express their disappointment that i'm resting you know and sometimes they try to bully you by saying great men you know they are praying through the night what you know and so on and so forth and at a point in time i had to obtain grace from god to be delivered by him so that i don't become a victim of all these things but i can tell you greatness comes at a cost i remember a gentleman who i think he he lost some, I, don't, I don't know which of the relatives and for more than one month that gentleman kept sending me text messages apostle i will not let you rest until you give me an answer as to why this kind of thing happened to my family i agree that i'm not close to god but i know you are close to god ask him for me and he meant it now i know you can laugh at the gentleman until you go through something that wrecks your destiny and puts and almost a full stop
attacks and persecution for as long as you are not great your watch is okay for as long as you are not great a man of god says nobody researches failure people only research success when you fail nobody will go and check and say i need to find out why you have failed except you succeed then you find all kinds of things the moment you succeed something is wrong with your watch it's supposed to be worn well something is wrong with your trouser you didn't you know hold it well something is everything is wrong with the great it is the burden of greatness are you learning something very very important attacks and persecution jesus himself said that in this life you will receive cars and houses and etc with persecution with persecution i'm telling you this because you see the truths that you are hearing from many of you will lift you above the current realms of success you are experiencing and for many others will bring you into that realm but as soon as you are done celebrating the glory and the grace of god in that realm you must be taught the ethics of remaining it's a very delicate realm it's a realm that can wreck you emotionally have you not heard of great people who committed suicide why should a billionaire commit suicide with all the money there why should someone holding a great position remember when the people were arguing and were insulting moses are you the only one god will speak to we want to hear him too moses went to god and said these people will worry me and god said all right let me speak to them separate yourselves rule number one for what we, that's the condition to hear him after three days they were angrily waiting at the mountain and then he came in cloud and fire and tongue turned that into their brains and their stubborn heads as soon as that happened do you know what they said listen listen they said god don't ever talk to us again from today talk to moses we will believe him but if that did not happen many of them would not believe that god's not talking to them was an act of his mercy they didn't have the capacity to hear his voice and see the fire the flame of his glory they would not listen attacks and persecution maybe it is already happening to some of us now in your place of work maybe it is about to happen to some of us right now you had a vision of the next level congratulations next level will always come with challenges the moment you are great something is wrong with your children the moment you are great something is wrong with you but thou oh lord are the shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou oh lord are the shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head so number one factor that is responsible for the weakness and the weariness of believers is the difference of hope disappointed expectations number two persecutions can i tell you jesus who was the son of the living god for as long as he was a young boy he could freely enter the temple and learn with the scribes and pharisees nobody had a problem with him but the day the holy ghost landed on his head and the voice said this is my beloved son hear ye him he returned in the power of the holy spirit and the bible says his fame went abroad there was a group of people who said look this young boy there is something wrong with this gentleman something is wrong the whole city is already beginning to hear your voice and they started finding an occasion and because jesus was a man they found it they found an occasion remember when they were before herod all kinds of troubles this guy said he would destroy the temple that took us decades and build it in three days he was talking about the temple of his body nobody asked him what were you really talking about that was not their business it was an occasion one day someone will come and stand before your pharmacy and see it as big as this auditorium and say investigate the life of these people 
I know them. There is no way who would have given you one billion naira. You are a thief. I will not rest until we dig into this. Welcome to the world of men. One day your father will win an election or your uncle or your mother and you will be surprised the new name you will be called. You will think it will be a name of honor and glory until they call you a fraudster. You, they catch you in, 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 in a KFC buying food of 5,000. They will insult your father for it. How you afforded 5,000? How about a preacher? For as long as you're small and not doing anything and not making any impact, that's all right. Nobody has that time. But may God begin to honor you and grant you grace. And then you see all kinds of things. How about business people? Someone calls you today, I'm in UK. Someone calls you tomorrow, you're in US. Must you say it? But that's where you are. Should you lie? Just say, I'm not available. Why must you say I'm in US? We must you draw me that you see and from the sincerity of your heart welcome to the world of men you stand in the midst of people and you have your watch or your shirt that is god is showing his faithfulness through you are in trouble for that even if it's a burial while you are standing there you will think that people are just crying only remembered for what we have done people are watching you and as soon as that burial is done they will tear you the way you pieces you know protein meat in, in, in the kitchen do you have the stamina can i tell you this jesus got to a point where he was fed up with all the things they were doing and when he knew that there was still more left dear people let me tell you this if it is the glory of god you are going to carry in your life you must sustain the strength you will go through high waters you will go through things that are not your business at all are we together now yeah. someone called me one day and said i hear you know so 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 politician i said what does that mean doesn't he have brothers and sisters oh and um this and that and that and i told him i said i'm not a politician i'm a man of god i'm a friend to politicians i love them i don't run away from them i believe i have a ministry to them but if you are calling me to discuss matters of politics please short i don't have that time you see that now because any position god puts you in will come with his own troubles you wait till god elevates you to a position somewhere and someone will come to meet you and say sorry this man who is your friend he's owing me 10 years money from business can you force him for me and he said no no no, i'm not in that and then you're in trouble persecution and criticism whether you belong to Jesus or you belong to Satan, one thing that is common to them both is we don't let them rest. There is persecution at both ends. So whether you decide to serve Jesus or you decide to serve Satan, one thing you will not escape if you are close enough to any of them is persecution. We don't let demons rest. Every week you see what happens here, week in, week out. So the whole thing is in different dimensions. What have I done that people don't like me? You succeeded. What have I done? You are changing lives. What have I done? You are making a mark in destinies. It is not always what you are doing wrong. It may be what you are doing right. Number three, very quickly. What is the third reason why people get discouraged and get weary even in the kingdom? The third reason is called sorrow many of you really do not know what sorrow is sorrow is an emotional state medical people will tell you that this thing we call sorrow is not just a sociological concept it is it is deeply emotional and even a medical condition the feeling of distress the emotional the emotional um what's it now the emotional pain that comes as a result of disappointments as a result of misfortunes as a result of losses is one thing for you 
to go through seasons that are uncomfortable but when the seasons get to you they produce what we call sorrow are you learning first peter chapter one we'll read the first eight verses first peter chapter one please if god is speaking to you say amen, amen. let's start from verse two did i get that right no, first peter first peter chapter four from verse 12 first peter chapter four let's look at verse 12 to 16 beloved okay i read it already think not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you next verse but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of christ's suffering look up please whose suffering is it called that means when you go through listen to me when you go through uncomfortable seasons on account of your love and your determination to become all that god has destined you to be the bible says it is not your suffering you are only partaking of christ's sufferings and the bible says there is a relationship between sufferings and glory it says the sufferings of christ and the glory that shall be revealed that ye may be glad also with exceeding joy next verse it says if ye be reproached for the name of christ the name of christ does not mean when you are directly preaching the gospel on account of your adherence to the principles of the kingdom that you are now excelling and then as a result there are all kinds of things happening to you it says happy are you for the spirit of glory and of god rested upon you it says on their part he is evil spoken of but on your part he is glorified very very powerful scripture of course the warning is already there none should suffer as a murderer thief evildoer busybody in other men's business and all of that if you suffer as a christian he says do not be ashamed do not be ashamed people persecute you because they thought you will use a political position or any position of honor at all to siphon resources and you have refused you choose the reproach of christ than all of these things let me tell you in africa people will get at you they will say you wasted eight years you wasted whatever years you wasted 30 years serving and you had an opportunity to take your share of the national cake and you refused and you did not let others take it there are many sincere people today in this nation and across africa whose children cannot walk freely with joy because of the anger that people have concerning their success and their victory there are people who today cannot come and give testimony in church is the reason why wealthy and blessed people hardly come to give testimony at best they may just tell the man of god and he prays for them because they are afraid of their own lives that every time people rise we live in a context that makes people feel guilty for the word of god working for them chances are that if you see a beautiful car just pass you can just look and say these wicked corrupt evil people you will vomit every one naira you are you see and it may not be so until you hear the story behind them or individuals who are excelling at any level sorrow it is not unusual to be saddened to be depressed to be downcast as a result of these situations jesus himself got to a point where he was fed up and he was weary when he went to gethsemane you would think he would just be rejoicing listen to me isn't it amazing that when job went through what he went through job worshipped when jesus went through what he went through jesus was willing to say father is it possible to negotiate this job didn't complain no he worshipped but jesus is about to get to the cross and the whole pain of all that he had gone through and the people he was going to die for were not even appreciating him how many children today look at their parents and insult them 
and say shame on you other people are taking their children around the world we are here and you can only take us to this school all you can do is pay our school fees and it can be painful as a responsible father and mother and you look and say what kind of a child is this you are not grateful that i can send you to school am i the one who gave birth to myself they will respond to you there are times when your good can be evil spoken of it brings sorrow it brings sorrow i know a man years ago who went to do an act of charity in a region somewhere and when he went at the at the end of it they persecuted that man and insulted him and said shame on him that for his status for him to go and give the the mini gifts that he gave the people there they said other ordinary people had done something better it was just a contribution have you seen people that you give them a bag of rice and they say where's the salt where is Maggie you just gave rice like that <laughs> listen beloved people of God I know we are laughing but I want you to pay attention because many of you right now this is one of the things that close the door to your heart of compassion you were not like that there are many loved ones who have been changed as a result of the evil heartedness of people there are people who have vowed today to never help anybody who is not their children in the nuclear family again because they've invested in too many people who have brought them heart pain have you seen such kind of families there are many people who took other children all their children are well behaved and all those they outsource to help have caused trouble they have slept in the station they have gone through all kinds of trouble because of someone else's child it can be very painful the sorrow the the bleeding of the heart that comes on account of your greatness and on account of your intention to serve the purposes of Jesus how about sincere people who have gone to pray with families and they just box them together as men of God and say all these prophets moving from house to house looking for food to eat whereas some of them were sincere people who were praying from the depth of their heart with families there are some of us men of God is almost like a cross day and night people believe that every man of God who God is helping is either using a charm somewhere or he's using some some uh, 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 you know one whatever uh, that demonic something that you ate and you swallowed and, and so on and so forth the moment people see the spectacular manifestation of the hand of God upon a life how about people who are blessed you see the moment people do not understand your life and your lifting the moment you become a mystery people will give their interpretation to everything around your life there are sincere people who have suffered and continue to suffer across boards all around the body of Christ on account of what God has done and is doing in their lives there are great people who have been faithful who have served who have done all kinds of things and they have not received the rewards that befit their sacrifices whether in office you hear someone will say I have served for 30 years I have served for 40 years and some of them are retired in shame and pain and just left like that some of the ideas that have driven many companies many organizations today the people who were the brain behind those ideas continue to live unrewarded lives today some of them are not even recognized whether as a nation as corporations people have brought all kinds of ideas and concepts that have produced victory tremendous victory for organizations and all kinds of platforms and yet those people remain rejected dejected and so on and so forth I may be talking about you I may be describing you but can I tell you something you must obtain grace through this teaching tonight to understand the spiritual dynamics of being and remaining an overcomer say I am an overcomer please shout it say I am an overcomer now very quickly I want to share with you five keys five keys and then we'll pray five keys that you must engage every time you meet